If an installation manual is not provided with the kit, you will need to follow these simple procedures. Please keep in mind we follow three simple rules. 1. The install needs to be appealing to the eye. Lines will be ran neat and clean. Blocks to be always mounted straight, not slanted up or down. 2. When placing Gronaveld product on the machine, the mechanic who will work on the equipment needs to be taken into consideration. Never mount anything or run lines in a manner that will prevent a mechanic from doing his daily duties. If the system hinders them in any matter, even if the system is working properly, the mechanic will not like the system. 3. Always follow the path the manufacturer has provided. OEMs spend lots of time and dollars designing equipment to withstand unusual punishment. The line routing on equipment is designed to go a certain way. It is our job to follow that path. In the end, a properly installed system will look as if the OEM has installed it at the factory. We're now ready to begin the installation procedure for a wheel loader. But note, before any machine receives an automatic lubrication system, the machine must be completely greased. If this does not happen, our system will never catch up to the customer's needs. First, verify the kit supplied is correct for the application. If not, please contact your Gronaveld representative to provide the proper kit. You must determine if the wheel loader you are working on will need the bucket, pins, and bushings removed. Most notable machines this applies to are Case, Komatsu, Doosan, JCB, and John Deere. After removing the bucket, we also remove the seals and the bushings. For the wheel loader, we need to make sure that the grease fittings are on the inside of the loader arms. So we will reverse the yokes and pins from the boom lift. This is what they looked like originally. And here's what they looked like after we changed them. Next, you'll want to remove any panels that may obstruct the work that you're about to do. The model we're working with is a waste handler wheel loader and had extra pieces that need to be removed. Now you can identify where the pump will be located. Normally, the pump will go on the left side on the deck plate. This may not be possible for all models and may need to be moved to the right side. Placement may also be dictated on the customer on where they would like the pump installed. Now it's time to mount the bracket and pump. Once mounted, run the main lines to location of where the first block will be mounted. The pump cable will run with the main line to the location the cable will enter the cab. Run the pump cable behind the pump to route nicely with the main lines. Now it's time to determine the location of the first block in the center of the loader. This is referred to as the B1 block. Prepping the block. First, identify the injector sizes and what point they will deliver grease to. You may need to make this block from scratch or simply modify the current block configuration. Mount the B1 block. Once injectors are identified and the location they will serve, you must mark your lines. This can be done in a simple manner, such as cutting the ends with simple cuts, applying colored zip ties, or marking with tape. Any form that will help you determine where the lines go. Another rule of thumb, black line always denotes the larger injector, red line is the smaller injector. You will need to plug in your pump switch to the B1 block. Notice how we've kept a service loop here in case any additional work needs to be done in the future. This cable will route to under the cab where it will connect with the rest of the electronics. Now determine the location of the second block. This is referred to as the B2 block. This block is normally mounted under the cross tube on a bracket that is provided with the kit. To mount the bracket, first weld the mount blocks. We had to modify our bracket by drilling new holes to match the location. Now you'll need to prep mounting surfaces. 
This may consist of drilling or welding where the clamping devices will be placed to secure the secondary lines. In the vulnerable pivot area, instead of using rubber wire, we will be using copper tube. This should be provided in your kit. Bend to fit in place. Before installing the grease lines, you must remove your original grease fittings and replace with our provided hardware. Plastic tubes will go with brass connectors. Steel fittings will go with steel. Now you will need to modify the loader arms and bushings to relocate the grease point. First, drill a pathway in the loader arm to where the bushing will be located. Then you'll need to bore threads into the hole for your super rod. You'll need to grind a pathway for grease into the side of your bushing. This should go all the way around. In one spot on the bushing, you will need to cut all the way through so grease can find its way into the inner channels. Not all bushings will have channels like this one. In such a case, when drilling into your loader arm, drill at a 45 degree angle, and then you'll need to make your groove around the center of the bushing, making sure to still put a notch all the way through in one spot. Bore out the hole on the inside of the loader arm, to help the grease get where it needs to go. Once modified, you can reinsert the bushings into the loader arms. Ensure your holes all line up. To begin installing your super rod, first measure and cut the rod to length. Thread the super rod into the loader arm. The super rod will require heat and bending to get into place. Once that is completed, you will clamp it to the arm of the machine. Once installed, all paint surfaces can be painted to match the previous color. At this point, you may begin routing secondary lines to the proper points. Make sure you leave enough cable in these areas. You will need the extra line as the arms move up and down. Now it's time to begin wiring the system. First, find a nice visible location to mount the display unit. A wiring diagram is located in the manual provided with the kit. Follow the wiring schematic to properly wire the system. For this wheel loader unit, we're plugging in to the F2 fuse. This fuse operates only when the ignition is turned on. The final procedure is to program the pump and bleed the system. Hook up a laptop with Gronenveld software to the pump to begin programming. The key must be turned on to access the pump. Once software has been initiated, proceed to the parameter screen. Here is where you will set the greasing cycles. Programming procedures will vary for various machines. Please contact your Groneveld rep for proper parameters if unsure. Once programmed, you may now start to bleed the system. This is achieved by putting the pump in a multi-cycle mode. 
Once bled, perform a couple of test cycles to ensure system is functioning properly. By now, your system has been successfully installed.